Good evening, everybody. As you know, I'm Professor Robert Romano. Since we didn't have school today, we're not going to have school tomorrow, the day that we have our class. And since we have a quiz coming up on Thursday, I wanted to post this video to go over the remaining information that will be on that quiz. All right, so this video is probably going to be about 10, 15 minutes at the most. But I'm going to go over the rest of the information that, that is necessary for the quiz on Thursday. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about the quiz, it is an online quiz. You'll need to access it on Blackboard. Um, it'll be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Once you open it up, you have two hours to complete the test. So be aware that you'll need to begin the test by 5 o'clock in order to finish by 7 o'clock, the time that it ends. All right. So uh, like I said, I just want to go over some more information so you have it for the quiz. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to email me or give me a telephone call. We went over, we were going over the sources of law that we have, and we've gotten through common law and constitutional law. Remember, Cassandra, there are 51 constitutions out there, not one, 51, one for the U.S. and 50 for each state. The third source of law is called statutory law. This is law that is created by the legislatures. The Congresses, the Senate, the House of Representatives, they enact laws that are called statutes. They're written laws that are established certain course of conduct that, are cover, that cover parties must adhere to. Right? So they're written laws. They're not just made up. They're written laws that, are, that establish certain courses of conduct that are covered, that covered parties must adhere to. They are enacted, again, by legislative bodies. State and federal legislatures can enact laws termed statutes. So when the federal Congress, if they ever do anything, they enact a law, it's termed a statute. If you're a state, state of New York, under Governor Cuomo and the state legislature, if they're not being put in jail like they are now, um, enact laws, they are termed statutes. However, if your city, if the city of New York or the counties, Bronx County, create laws, those are termed ordinances, all right? Statutes are state and federal, ordinances are cities and counties, okay? Statutory law means our own statutes or ordinances are only valid in the area governed by that entity. So if the federal government enacts a statute that is enforced throughout the United States. If the state of New York enacts a statute, that's only enforced throughout the state of New York. It doesn't have any effect on New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. If the city of New York enacts an ordinance, it's only valid or enforceable within the city of New York. It is not enforceable in Yonkers. Okay, and same thing in, in counties. If the Bronx County, where, where, where I live, sometimes, um, enacts an ordinance, it's only valid within that county, okay? And statutes can cover just about anything. You can deal with crime, civil litigation, housing issues, um, landlord-tenant, zoning, building, building of a sports arena. So I'm a sports guy, so I always got to throw something sports in there. On, under the doctrine of supremacy, when jurisdictions overlap, or conflicts arise, federal law always prevails over state law, and state law always prevails over local law. All right? If there is a conflict in the law, federal law always prevails over state law, state law always prevails over local law. This is an issue we're having right now. The states of Colorado, Washington, Alaska have enacted statutes wherein pot, marijuana, is legal. However, under federal law, it's still illegal. So by right, you can be arrested by federal marshals for smoking pot in the states where it is legal. They haven't enforced it yet. That's a different story. But federal law always prevails over state law, and state laws always prevail over local laws. And no statute, no ordinance, no matter what level, can violate your state or U.S. Constitution. All right, Cassandra, all 51 constitutions cannot be vi violated in any way by state or federal statute. They can't take any of your rights away. Fair enough? 
Administrative law is the fourth source of law. Administrative law basically means that administrative agencies are created by statute. And they are specialized bodies that are granted lawmaking authority to regulate certain activities. Okay? So, your federal government can act the statute saying we're creating this administrative agency, and this administrative agency is going to have a right to govern certain activities. Uh, think of those examples of administrative agencies that are out there uh, agencies that have limited authority to enforce or regulate certain activities. What do you think? Come on, you know they're out there. Administrative Agency, National Labor Relations Board. It's a federal agency. It deals with all labor issues. States and counties and cities have their own labor relations board boards, and they deal with the certain issues regarding regarding employment in that jurisdiction. The IRS, the big one. The IRS is a specialized agency created by statute. Okay. The Congress said we need somebody to inf to enforce, create tax laws, and then enforce them and then collect the money. So they created the Internal Revenue Service as an administrative agency. And they have a right to collect taxes and enforce the tax code. If you don't pay your taxes, you can go, you can be punished by fines and even imprisonment. Ask Wesley Snipes. Um, so... The Internal Revenue has is a very powerful administrative agency. OSHA is another powerful administrative agency. They can come to your work site and make sure that your employer is abiding by all codes, making sure that when you walk into the store, even though it's visually perfect, it also has to abide by all the codes that's for employment for employment safety reasons. The FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Or make sure that you're eating healthy food, healthy meats. The FAA, when you get on the plane at LaGuardia, want to make sure that um, the plane's going to take off and land properly. Right? All these are administrative agencies given limited authority by, by statute to control and regulate certain activities. Okay? That's your fourth area of law. Your fifth source of law is executive orders. And really, to a certain extent, doesn't affect this all that much. Um, there's never been an executive order with my name on it telling me to do something. However, um, executive orders have been used and have been used in the last 10 years in your lifetime to develop the Department, Department of Homeland Security. All right, there wasn't a Department of Homeland Security pre-9-11, post-9-11, President Bush used his executive power to issue an executive order to create this specialized body, the Department of Homeland Security. And he got that power from the Constitution. It's implicitly said in the Constitution that the, that the uh, president can do this um, as long as a delegation of Congress signs off on it. Okay, so the president can issue executive orders. They can declare war to a certain extent. They can um, pardon people to a certain extent, pardon people for crimes. So the, the president, the governors have certain powers that they can in, initiate, which, have, which are laws, but only govern a very small portion of the populace. All right, the sixth area of law are treaties. All right, treaties. U.S. Constitution provides that the president, with the advice and consent of the Senate, may enter into treaties with foreign govern governments. All right, these treaties can be on anything, uh, war issues, trade issues, um, copyright issues. So there are many treaties between countries dealing with many, many different issues involving business, um, war, um, how you, the diplomats are going to be treated on each other's soil, that kind of stuff. All right, so those are your six areas of laws or sources of law. Common law, constitutional law, statutory law, administrative law, to a lesser extent, executive orders, and treaties. Okay? We went over in the last case how to brief a case. Um, just want to let you know that the plaintiff, so when you read these cases, the plaintiff is the one who brings the lawsuit. The plaintiff is responsible for bringing the lawsuit. The defendant 
is the party against whom the lawsuit is brought. All right, so in every case, the plaintiff brings the lawsuit, the defendant defends against the lawsuit. Um, also want you to realize that some of these cases are appeals, all right? And we're gonna go over the different levels of the court system in the next chapter. It won't be on this quiz. But the petitioner or the appellant is the party that brings the appeal. Now that person can be either the plaintiff or defendant. So whoever loses at the lower court can bring an appeal. So if the plaintiff loses at the lower court, they bring an appeal, they are called a petitioner or the appellant. If the defendant loses at the, at the lower level and they bring the appeal, they are known as the petitioner or the appellant. The respondent, the person who responds to the appeal, either the plaintiff or defendant again, depending on the situation, is called the respondent or the appellee. Okay. And we went over how to brief a case, case captions, summary of key facts, legal issues presented, court's reasoning, and the holding. Okay? So, all that being said, all this information regarding our last class and what I will summarize today will be on the quiz come Thursday. So, review this video. After you review this video, take notes you'll have all the information that, that is necessary. I will also post this PowerPoint in Blackboard, okay? So you have it anyways, just in case um, the video was covering a portion of, of the words or the verbiage. But um, so you have this for the quiz. So there should be no questions. Everybody should do extremely well. Again, I just wanted to get you guys acclimated to, to, to Blackboard, acclimated to, to taking a test on Blackboard understand what kind of questions I usually ask, get familiar with, with, with my type of questioning. And I also need to evaluate where you guys are for future tests. Okay? All right. Enjoy the snow. <laughs> enjoy your days off. I will um, enjoy your quiz on Thursday. Good luck. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, please feel free to reach out. I'm always here.